Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And Apple just released the public beta for their upcoming iOS 13 update coming to iPhones. And I have it installed on my iPhone XS Max. Now, the lowest models that are going to be getting the iOS 13 update are iPhone 6S and SE. So any phones lower than that are not going to be getting the iOS 13 update. I'd like to go ahead and take a look at the iOS 13 beta, talk about everything that's new and included and some exciting features actually coming to this update. Let's go ahead and get started. If you're interested in installing the iOS 13 beta, I will link to it down below. Just keep in mind that there are going to be bugs since it is a beta. So if you rely on your phone for important things, probably wouldn't recommend installing it. To begin, if you have an iPhone 10 or higher, you should start to see a 30% increase in speed in the face unlock. And I've noticed it does seem a little bit quicker. Also, another setting that you can turn on that I kind of like is if you go into settings, accessibility, face ID and attention, you can actually have haptics on successful authentication. So I have that turned on. So what happens is a very subtle vibration when that padlock unlocks and your phone actually recognizes your face. In addition to iOS 13 that I really like that was actually taken out of Android is that within the control center, if you press and hold or 3D touch on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, they will actually pop up with extra settings. So you can do it all within the control center. You don't have to jump into settings to find a new Bluetooth or Wi-Fi address. Another one that seemed pretty obvious was changing the volume toggle to not take up too much screen space. So now it's over on the left side by the volume rockers. So let's say you're in a specific app or watching a video and you go ahead and use that toggle. It takes up a little bit more space at the beginning, but then it goes down to that slim bar. And speaking of volume, when you turn silent mode on and off with the toggle, you'll see that has just kind of updated visually. And you might have noticed it already, but dark mode is here for iOS 13. That is all the craze, especially now that phones have OLED displays that show true blacks when no pixel needs to be lit up. Now to turn that on, very easy, go into display and brightness, you'll see a light and a dark mode. I wanna make a note that the wallpaper can also shift and have a darker appearance depending on if you have that night or light mode on. So let's go ahead and turn light on. You'll see back to the normal white theme, which you might want during the day. If I go home, you'll see my wallpaper is actually even lighter than it was. We can jump back into that and go back into the dark theme. And you'll see a lot of apps will actually be themed. So not just settings, you'll notice all the stock Apple apps, including you'll see here the app store right here, a bunch of different ones, even clocks gonna be darker for you. And like I said, that wallpaper switches back and forth. You can also set this to automatic. So you have options where it's sunrise to sunset or set your own custom schedule for the light and dark mode. You'll see the stock Apple keyboard will change with that dark mode. The notes app changed with the dark mode, but the keyboard itself got an update, the swipe feature. So you can go ahead and swipe to type. So if you say, hey, how are you doing? You'll see it types like so. It's very easy. I highly recommend it. It's much better with one handed too. I am great. Thanks for asking. You don't have to press the space bar. All you have to do is really lift up your finger and it will know it will start a new word. Speaking of the App Store, it did get an update. So this is the Today page, just with some suggestions. You can go to Games, Apps, Arcade, or search for an app. And then if you wanna get into your apps or your account, you tap this icon in the upper right-hand corner. It swipes up all of your apps here that you can update specifically. Now, one little thing inside, let's say I don't want HQ on my device anymore. I can just go ahead and swipe over and hit delete and uninstall it. So if you see an app, hey, why, why do I need to install an update on this app that I never use? You can just delete it within the app store. And then of course you can hit update all to update all the apps at once. Plus, if you download a large file, maybe one of the larger games such as PUBG Mobile or something, you can do that over mobile data now unlimitedly. You don't need, it doesn't actually have a cap over mobile data downloads. A lot of the Apple apps got updated. Apple Maps got a bit of an update. Also, Find My is now an app. You'll see it right there. And what it is, is where you can share your location with friends or find your specific Apple devices, maybe your MacBook, AirPods, etc. Now, one thing that is new here with the location access, let me get a little closer look here. So you'll see allow while using the app, allow once or don't allow. So you have the option to actually say don't allow. And then you'll see here, turn on send let not now. I can go ahead and go through here. So you'll see I can share my location with specific people. Or if I tap here, I can find my devices. Siri has also gotten updated and sounds kind of more like a human and less robot. What's the weather like today? Here's the weather today. What is the tallest building in the world? 
And as you can see, still not coming up with an actual answer for this question, which seems kind of obvious. Let's go ahead and talk about what's the definition of plant? As a noun, it means a living organism of the kind exemplified by trees, shrubs, herbs, grasses, ferns, and mosses. All right, so there you go. So as you can see, more human sounding. Also, I just looked at the plant and said plant, like I love lamp. Now, I don't think this is enabled yet, but you can actually sign in with your Apple ID through specific apps that they're going to be rolling out, or you can sign in with an email, or such as Facebook, Google, all of those various sign in with options. If you go into battery settings and go into battery health, there's an optimized battery charging right there. So it says to reduce battery aging, iPhone learns from your daily charging routine, so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you use it. Another one I can't show you because I don't have my SIM in this phone right now. Within settings, cellular, you can turn on a low data mode to reduce your network data usage. Now, if you're like me and have a million Safari tabs open, you can actually start to automatically close those. So if you scroll down, you'll see close tabs. Instead of manually, you could say after one day, after one week, after one month, that way it'll just close all those tabs after they've been sitting there for that specific period of time. One final thing that's worth mentioning is that they're adding controller support for PS4 and Xbox controllers. So you'll be able to play specific games that have controller support with those controllers on iOS 13. So that's pretty exciting. But overall, that's everything I wanted to show off. There are some more things, smaller things that would take a long time to show off. So I will just link to Apple's post about all the changes down below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to click that thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe as well. More to come on upcoming iPhones, iOS releases, and a lot more. So click that subscribe button. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.